what Estonia felt to me, or what, what I was struck by, is a, a, a passionate, ambitious adolescent. And I mean that in the positive sense of the world, of, word of uh, a very young country, and yet a country that set an extremely high standard for itself, uh, and uh, is both proud and yet uh, never satisfied. Uh, so when I look at the achievements that Estonia has has made in a very short amount of time that it's been an independent country, I think it's quite remarkable. And if you look at Estonia compared to any of its peer group of uh, recently independent former Soviet republics, I think Estonia stacks up quite well on almost every metric. And yet, when I bump into any Estonian in the street and they say, what do you think of Estonia? I say, oh, I think it's a fabulous place. I have a lot of respect. Well, don't, don't you, aren't you aware we're bad at this and we don't do this well and here's four things we need to do better and uh, very, uh, very self-critical. Uh, but I think in a good way, I think that kind of ambition, that kind of sense of not being satisfied and continuing to strive for more is probably why you have been so successful to date and why I have every confidence that Estonia is going to continue to be successful. The other thing that really struck me about uh, at least the Estonians that I have met and come into contact with is a tremendous pride in Estonia, uh, a real deep, deep sense of patriotism. Uh, in fact, I, I, think, uh, I don't think I have been to another country, spent quality time in another country where I felt such a deep sense of pride in the nation, uh, a sense of uh, wanting to contribute, wanting to return, wanting to stay. Uh, uh, it's uh, a really a nice thing to be a part of. So I think it's a very strong culture. I think there's a ton to be proud of. Uh, it's led to a, a great organization. My team at, at uh, Skype, I'm incredibly proud of. Very passionate, very committed, very uh, smart people who want to change the world and who have a vision for what they can do uh, based here in Estonia, but the impact that they can have on, on the whole world. Mr. President, what Skype is to you? Well, I would say three things. Uh, first of all, um, I mean, most broadly, Skype is, uh, represents that platonic ideal of what, uh, of what we think Estonia should be. Uh, we just think that everything should be Skype, but uh, I mean, sort of the sort of small group of people come together, come up with a really brilliant idea that then becomes uh, known all over. Uh, and I think that sort of, that in that sense, it is what sort of, uh, we can talk about the issue of smallness later, but I think that sort of gets at what our, our sort of existential angst is about, is being so small, no one notices us. Uh, but we, through our sheer brilliance, I mean, we have beginning from our our entire national mythology is based as well. We, we are not large in uh, number, but we have to be large with our ideas. And, and Skype is uh, sort of a realization of that in the 21st century world. Uh, secondly, um, uh, more broadly, of course, Skype, uh, or more or less broadly, but in terms of uh, sort of the diplomacy of business and, uh, and, uh, and of diplomacy, uh, not that many people know what Estonia is, but a lot of people know what Skype is. And if we say, well, Skype, you know, we invented it. And uh, people go, oh, really? So it's, uh, it does have its, uh, uh, in a sense, we've gotten to the point where we, uh, we promote Estonia by mentioning Skype. At least I do that. And people that uh, otherwise have no idea about Skype. Uh, or rather about Estonia, they, they get a clue about what we're about, and they've, they've never even conceived of this. Uh, fairly analogous to the uh, phenomenon uh, that we had in the uh, 1990s, say, in the United States, where I would, or you talk, where Finns would talk about Nokia. Uh, here, we all say, oh, we, we are looking for our Nokia. Well, in fact, if you talked about Nokia in the US, they go, oh, you mean that really great Korean company? Um, because that's what most people thought Nokia was, was you know, Samsung, Nokia, and no one really thought it was Finland. Uh, but it is, it, it did, uh, I mean, it, it's sort of a similar problem that people know about Nokia, they didn't know about Finland, they didn't know about uh, Skype, they don't know about Estonia. And of course, then, strictly personally, Skype, for me, represents uh, kind of a fulfillment of what was the original idea and the real, real idea behind uh, the Tiger Leap or Tigrip, which is that 
exposure to using computers at an early age means that you it will then start early thinking about uh, things and uh, inventing and playing around with computers rather than doing it at a later age. My experience was that I started playing with computers at or at least with programming it in eighth grade, and I thought this is something that should happen, and I'm, it's just personally pleasing to meet these young, very rich millionaires who, uh, who all started uh, playing on computers in high school uh, as a result of the Tiger Leap program.